Hi, and welcome to DCO. My name is David Capetti, and welcome to this Rhino tutorial. So what I'll be doing in this video is something a little bit different than what I typically do parametrically, but I want to share how I created this. So it's a floor plan that was given to me by a student and in elevation, they want to know how to create the roof planes as you see them here, basically hip roofs all throughout this design. So I took that floor plan, created this um, quick sketch of the forms here in the front. And now I'm going to show you how to create the roof for it. I'll show you the beginning part on a time lapse, and then I'll be going over the details on how to create that. So let's get started. So first things first, we'll take all of this information and hide it. And now we can focus on just this form. So I'll take this, hide it, go to ZS for zoom selected. Now here we can get started creating our forms. So there are three different forms. We have this one, we have this one and this one. And although there are only three forms, it's going to look like there's more because we have jogs here on the walls and that's going to cause the hips to either get bigger or smaller, and you'll see how that happens. So first thing, we'll go uh, create a layer, call this, you know, sketch layer or whatever. I like to use different colors. That way I can kind of see the new stuff that I'm creating. So I'm going here to layer two. We can also change the name. We'll start with a polyline, and I'm going to just create a polyline all the way around on the outside. This is one way of doing it. We can also extract the polylines of the outside and then join them. So at the end here, I do C enter to close. And that's one way we can create it. The other way is going to be DUP edge, which is duplicate edge. And this will help us pick the outside ones. Sometimes this is a little bit more accurate in terms of picking the lines rather than having to redraw them. When you redraw them, you introduce an um, the ability for an error, right? So now with this, we know that they're lying, they're right on top of that outside face. So now what we need to do with this is offset it to the outside. This is going to determine our overhang. So depending on what overhang we want, see here? Actually, let me tap and show. So we have overhang, overhang, and they look like they're consistent overhangs. Like this looks like maybe two feet. This one may be three feet. So that's what we'll do. We'll do two feet on this one and three feet on this one to show you how to create two different overhangs. So we'll start with this one. We'll go to offset, two feet to the outside. Here's the thing, now we are going to determine our slope. So depending on what roof slope you want, if this is two feet, then you multiply the rise times two. So if you want, let's say a uh, four and 12 slope or a six and 12 slope, then we would bring this down six inches per every foot. Since we offset it by two feet, we'll go, we can do it just incrementally, minus six inches. And then once again, I'll click this one and it'll do minus six inches. There are different ways of doing this next step. The way that I like to do it, this way I can kind of visualize the way the roof slopes are created. Select these two, type in loft, enter, enter. And we start seeing the base part of the roof being created by offsetting, bringing this down and connecting those lines. The other way, like I mentioned, we can get rid of this and we can start by creating connecting lines here. This way we can join them where they intersect. So I'll do a fillet, which means round off the edges, radius of zero. And so that creates one of the first uh, roof slopes here. Next, 
as shown when we kind of loft this together there's going to be another one here so what i like to do is take this this is almost our hip beam and we're going to copy it from here this corner to this corner same thing here between this one and this one so that's going to determine the slope between these two now we can connect them using this one but we don't necessarily need to uh, because we're going to be i'll show you how we're going to be putting that together so that's the first hip next we're going to do the large hips when you look at a roof and it's not a square roof then there's going to be one way the long way is going to be where the ridge is so wherever you have a form that is not square, that it's rectangular, you're going to have a ridge at the top. You need to determine the ridge by doing this. So we'll do fill it again, and we'll fill it between the two close uh, lines, not the further ones. You, you'll see why. If I do this one, and then I do this one, you see that this goes all the way up. Well, this is going to be a ridge right here because this goes past this roof. So showing you here. From here to here and to fill it next is doing the same thing for the other side but since we already have these two we can hold down shift do a mirror from the center point and then mirror it over that way we can also create the ridge if that's something you want to see and visualize but that creates the roof for that portion um, and we're going to see how this roof portion intersects with that portion so to finalize this those could be kind of our beams or our curves for our overall roof geometry but if we go here let's say to a different layer go to this one now i'll show you how to create the planes so i'll select these two and there are a few other steps like having this sit correctly on the wall that's a step that we do later on when we bring everything down so now with this we're going to select this one and this one but remember that you want to pick the same side so now if i type in loft it creates a surface between those two here's the reason why i tell you that if you do loft and then you select this top of this curve and then this bottom part of this curve it kind of tries to twist it therefore creating this so that's not what we want we want to loft between these two then loft again between these two as you can see we can take this and just mirror it instead of having to recreate it as long as it's symmetrical and same thing here so we'll take these two and that's all we need we don't even need this line or this line we'll do loft now we can take this and mirror it to the other side now we can loft between this one this one we can mirror the other side so now this is not technically complete because we can take this hide it and see that where these two intersect which are at the same location we can select that and trim the inside portion and now we have a really clean roof form that we can join together and we can delete everything else as long as we don't need it the other thing is we can also hide it so i'll type in shell And so these roof forms a little bit smaller and so that's that's interesting here it creates this um, interesting intersecting forms in the front that creates a very pleasing aesthetic in terms of breaking up the geometry and not making it boring and having your eye always have something to look at so let's go on select this isolate now we're going to do the same thing but to this side so Duplicate edge or polyline. We'll be doing these. Enter and then join because they're separate curves. Six curves joined into one open curve. Now I can offset by three feet.
and then bring this down by three times that. So minus six, minus six, minus six, or one foot six inches. And that would make the roof slope be the same. Unless you want a different roof slope, then we can take care of those other details. Let's go and create this one. We're going to create this one and this corner from corner to corner. Now fill it to round this off. Take this and shift it, copy from here to here. Now we're going to do another hip roof. I'll copy this here and then fill it between these two. Now we can go on to do this. Create the root, the ridge. And so this form is going to be a little bit shorter than the back. So we'll bring out a ridge like here. Like this. And this one is going to be an interesting one because this one actually goes straight up here. We'll do the fillet. Next is this other backside. So sometimes this roof will get in the way and we where that how they intersect, we need to resolve that. And we'll go between these two. And if this all of this roof slope is all the same, then where this intersects with this one, so we'll do fill it between this and this. Because there wouldn't be a hip here. This, if you put a hip here, then there's gonna be some issue with the water here. Okay. This does not go here. This is that same roof slope, and this is going to be Let's start creating the planes because that that's one of the things that helps a lot is starting to go from what we know to what we don't know. So we'll loft those two together. We'll loft these two. We'll loft these two. We mirror this one. That doesn't work. Um, so we'll go here between this one, extrude curve. So this is another technique extrude curve, then direction this way, and then set base point to pick that point to extrude from all the way out to here. Now we can do the same thing with this one extrude, We're going to go up and down, direction, this direction. And since it extrudes from the center, well, we need to set base point to know where to extrude from. So this portion, it got a little bit interesting and tricky. And the reason why is because at this part, we have a hip root and this back part, it's kind of going to this gable end. So what I had to do is take this side, mirror it to the other side. And then use this other plane that was here to trim off this kind of extra part. Then we're left over with this. Now this is behind this kind of projection. So I need to select these and type in trim to trim that inside part. That then leaves us with this gable end here. And this is... From the front elevation, you probably wouldn't see this. Um, and if this form was a little bit more to the right, it would actually be able to intersect with this form. Now that's not happening here, so this will need to stay as a gable end on this side, but we do also need to 
create this. I need to offset. Minus one foot six inches. And then there's going to be this little portion of the roof. So what I'll do is create a polyline right on the outside of that. And since I know that it's on this plane, and then I know it's coplanar, so I can do planar surface and join these two and merge all coplanar faces. Now what happens here is there's going to be an extrusion. So extrude, curve, this base curve, and also this other base curve and extrude them up. So it's extruding to the sides. I'll go to D for direction, and then go up. Now we can take this and this, and trim this one and this becomes either part of the roof of part of the wall and then same with this one this needs to and this this little segment That stays there, and then this is coplanar, so we can create a polyline, then planar surface, and then join, and then merge all coplanar faces. So that's how that roof would look. It doesn't terminate as clean as I thought here. Um, The only other thing would be to take this ridge, move it over, but then what happens is that it creates a place where water could pool. Here, the water comes down, it goes to this side, it goes here to a gutter, to a gutter. There's going to be a small cricket here that brings the water down here or down to this one. And this other one is going to be the same, the same idea. So we'll take a polyline or a duplicate edge. Join, offset, three feet, minus one six. By doing this, we're creating base forms. Now we're going to start with the small one so fill it between this one and this one and then fill it between this one and this one you'll see that it goes past it which means that there should be a line here then we can fill it between these two bring this one over and do fill it between this and this
Now we copy this to here, and now this becomes the new. We did that polyline now? Planar, planar surface. Okay, so that took a little bit. I wanted to make sure that I got, got all of that right. There is a tiny bit of a wall that gets created right here at the end. So I'm going to take the planes that are the same. So join, sometimes I cut, that way I can delete stuff behind and then paste right on top and type in merge all coplanar faces. So take this, this, Join, merge all complete our faces, and this will trim off so we have this, this, this one, this one. This triangle where this intersects with this one. And that becomes a small wall here. Especially when you have a triangle, we can create three, one, two, take off nearest because it's messing us up here, intersecting, and then C to close, and then plane our surface to close off that little bit here. And then this part, there would be a wall here. Extrude curve and then trim the top here. So some of these forms do take require some playing around with. The idea and the concept that I like to use is from general to specific, and you want to go from the stuff that you know to the stuff that you don't know. Um, some of this mostly comes down with experience. Uh, so let's finish this off and show you how to create the solid. So isolate this, take the roof portion, select objects, I'll do join, and then merge all coplanar faces to see which ones 
our coplanar and then we can explode again or we can just keep it here like this for now um, next portion is going to be new layer we'll go to the front elevation now we need to move this all of these forms from this point to where this point projected up where that is bring that down so this is where i turn on project go to m to move go here to the inside face of the wall and then let's see if smart track's not working i'll just create a line here go to move from the intersecting apparent intersection down to here because that's where it's going to sit on the wall then we're going to extrude up to create the, the roof thickness here's the other thing i want to duplicate edge because i want to copy the angle of this one. enter and then move it over here then do project to c plane and then do delete in, in, input objects yes why because we're creating a line segment that is the same as the slope here in elevation so i can offset by 7.25 we'll do by uh, 2 by 8 and then we can do let's say one inch on the outside then i like to create a line segment like this because this is basically the roof that we want to create depending on what you do want to create then you would create a segment that represents that and then we can use that to extrude our stuff and you'll see here we have our new layer layer four we'll do extrude surface won't let me select objects uh, through the layer so what i'll do is i'll be just selecting them I hit enter. Set base point. This way I can pick from here to here. So it's going to extrude from here to here. Then we're going to now do the same thing again. Extrude surface, but just the top surface. enter we'll go here back to elevation set base point and we'll go from here to here this these type of wall new walls that are created in some portions like here those can be used as vents they could all they are also issues right because the water would want to sit there so those are things that you want to think about during the design so let's hide this of course there's there are going to be more things going on here right like if we go to center boolean difference we start seeing that we can start creating forms and stuff like this where they intersect, you can select this Boolean difference with this one. Or select this Boolean difference with this and this. So that is how you create like these multi-hipped roof uh, designs. Sometimes you can just do it in floor plan view, but a lot of times it, you, it does require for you to take the steps that you would, let's say out in the field, do them here, 3D modeled, and then see if you like how they intersect or what these aspects are and if not then there are other things that can be done to to fix this and this is just a portion of the house right like if we had a bunch more house then there's probably this is this probably wouldn't be an issue so thank you very much for watching hopefully you found that interesting there are a few things that hopefully you saw that it, they're not so simple they're not so straightforward you do have to think and solve some of those things depending on each case scenario so hopefully you found that interesting and i hope to see you on the next one